Hey everyone, welcome back. I just want to thank you all again for helping us pass the incredible milestone of our 100th episode. If you've been watching us for any time now, you know we're dedicated to bringing you the essentials of star-based development. And in episode 101 today, we're going to get you caught up on all the highlights. So let's dig in. Friday morning began with an extended pour inside Star Factory, placing concrete down inside the footprint of the new steel. Pouring through the sunrise, the concrete pump truck was relocated outside and continued its work, placing concrete on the grounds outside. At the rocket garden, thermal protection tiles were removed from Ship 28's forward and aft flaps. Over at the launch complex, a prefab hut used to house electrical equipment was temporarily relocated as pipeline and conduit continues to be run at the complex. The second section of Mega Bay 1's new door was partially lowered towards the base of the bay as work on the entrance's new wind and weather breaking cover nears completion. Construction of the new extended Star Factory Hall continued this week, extending the building with beams and columns joined at the walls and roof. To accommodate the latest and star bases ever-changing plans and additions, a section of the concrete pad in front of the new hot dog cryo tanks was cleared out. Meanwhile, form work was put in place for a concrete pour to fill the remaining gap in the new blast wall in front of the liquid oxygen subcoolers. Inside the launch complex, beams were placed on the heavy-duty shoring to support a concrete deck for the building next to the deluge tank. The purpose of this structure is not yet clear, so watch this space for more future developments. About an hour after its earlier stop, the new door to Mega Bay 1 was lowered down to its base level. The door was then fully raised for the first time. With the LR11000's main boom and jib reassembled, the boom was raised for reeving. Once the hoist lines are run through the sheaves and lifting hook, the crane will be ready for service. A vacuum raptor was removed from Ship 28 and placed into storage as crews continue to make final modifications and preparations to the Starship for its debut in the third integrated flight test. While it's not yet clear why the engines are being removed, they may be upgrading components to resist the causes of failure during IFT-2. Assembly of Booster 13's propellant tanks was completed with the joining of the methane and liquid oxygen tanks. The next step will be connecting the plumbing to avionics and other subsystems needed to perform cryogenic proof testing. Concrete was placed in the new launch site blast wall on Saturday morning, filling in the last gap in the barrier between the propellant farm and the launch pad. With crews working around the clock at Starbase, early Sunday morning a vacuum raptor was brought to Ship 28 and was eventually installed after a few aborted attempts. Late in the evening, the new Style Booster transport stand was relocated from the Rocket Garden to the Ring Yard, pre-staging for a rollout of Booster 10 later in the week. A new liquid oxygen pump was delivered to the launch site on Monday. The pumps have long been a source of trouble for the propellant farm and are still subject to replacement. After a short stay in the ring yard, the booster transport stand was moved into Mega Bay 1. Less than an hour later, the unexpectedly empty transport stand was moved back out of the bay. Work began to replace the faulty liquid oxygen pump at the orbital tank farm in the evening, using a crane to lift the motor off the pump housing. The pump assembly was removed next and laid down in the offloading area. With the faulty pump cleared away, the replacement pump assembly was lowered into the pump housing on Tuesday morning. Seen here is a particularly shiny tower segment being hauled down Highway 4. It's kind of hard to tell from here, but this could either be a brand new or freshly galvanized segment transported from Florida. Drilling work was underway at the parking lot between Remedios Avenue and the Stargate building. This is likely for gathering geotechnical data for future construction work. The elevator floor section of a new white painted ship stand was spotted ahead of its installation inside Mega Bay 2 onto one of the stands that are used to hold down ships for assembly operations. A ship carrying the ninth and final hot dog style cryogenic storage tank arrived at the port of Brownsville where it'd soon be unloaded and transported to Starbase. A SpaceX-owned multi-unit self-propelled modular transporter configured to carry large storage tanks was relocated to the launch site ahead of the new cryotank's arrival. 
The SPMT was pre-staged for the final positioning and placement of the tank ahead of its delivery. On Wednesday morning, the orbital launch mount's hold-down arm retraction system was tested. This hydraulically driven system keeps the booster anchored to the pad before launch. Let's listen. Shortly afterwards, the Launch Complex PA system announced that the test was complete and the pad was open. Workers inside Mega Bay 1 continue to work on the new doorway, which is designed to fold in on itself when opened. Once the door is fully checked out, we anticipate that they'll close the remaining gaps around the door frame. Across the build site, construction of Star Factory continued as new columns were added to extend the latest addition of the facility. Meanwhile, at the launch site, the liquid oxygen pump that was previously removed was wrapped in tarps and loaded onto a trailer to be hauled away. The placement of steel armor around the concrete base of the orbital launch integration tower is almost complete and the protective plating now wraps around the corners and columns. The remaining gaps in the plates will be filled in with welds. The previously excavated area in front of the new hot dog cryo tanks was being prepped for new concrete as workers placed links of rebar into the excavated ground. After two weeks of disassembly, maintenance and reassembly, SpaceX's LR-11000 raised its boom, ready to lift starships for static fires once more. The new cryo tank was delivered to the launch site in the afternoon, heading down the highway on a specifically configured Sarin's transport for the trip. Mirroring the previous tank deliveries, the barriers were moved and area cleared for the tank, which was backed into the launch complex and deposited on site for final placement by SpaceX. Over at the build site, the main ring of the ship's stand under construction inside Mega Bay 2 was lifted and installed onto the stand. As the work in Mega Bay continued, the new cryo tank was moved into position at the launch site, filling the final support stand at the complex. Meanwhile, concrete was placed in the previously excavated and now heavily reinforced ground in front of the new hot dog cryotanks. As the sun set over Starbase, the skies lit up in a vivid orange reminiscent of Mars, a reminder of SpaceX's ultimate goals for Starship. The new columns at Star Factory were topped off on Thursday morning, building out the factory's outer wall. The remaining roof beams followed shortly afterwards, bringing the new hall section to parity with the existing structure. Trenching work in front of the orbital tank farm continued with the addition of permanent access panels as equipment begins to bury the finished sections. Metal jacketing was added to the outside of the new small water tank, covering the polymer insulation previously added around the tank. Over at Sanchez, the first column for segment 8 of the new launch tower was lifted onto the assembly jig. The second column was in place by early in the afternoon as crews worked quickly to put the sub-assemblies together. Inside Mega Bay 1, the overhead bridge cranes moved Booster 10 from the engine installation stand to the waiting transport stand. Once in place, the load spreader was detached as Booster 10 was prepared to begin its journey to the launch site. After a quick inspection with a lift, Booster 10's grid fins were checked out and were then rotated to prepare it to roll through the doorway. Meanwhile, the third column for the tower section was lifted vertical and then placed onto the assembly jig. 82 days after the second integrated flight test, Booster 10 rolled out of Mega Bay 1 to begin its latest and hopefully final journey to the launch site, where it will undergo full stack testing and other final launch preparations. If all goes well, the booster will hopefully be ready for launch as soon as SpaceX receives an amended license from the FAA. The grid fins were left at an angle as it passed the doorway, then reset to the neutral position shortly after. Booster 10 was then rolled out to Highway 4, and a rolling closure began to start the booster's latest journey to the launch complex. The booster's trip to the launch complex continued through the rest of that afternoon, with a rolling traffic jam behind the rocket as it headed to the launch pad. Eventually, the booster arrived at the launch site, entering the complex through the main gate. Once inside the launch complex, the booster was brought to the staging area near the tower, while the chopsticks were raised into the lifting position and opened. The ship quick disconnect arm was then swung out, clearing the way to lift the booster onto the launch mount. Back at Sanchez, with the three columns in place, the first two cross beams were added to the tower section. 
Returning to the launch site with the booster in place between the chopsticks, the lifting arms were closed and the system was readied for lift. This week at the Cape, we saw Falcon 9 Booster 1062 lifted off a short fall of Gravitas on Friday and placed onto the dockside stands for stowage after its 18th successful flight. Two additional orbital launch tower segments were brought to the docks and staged for transport to Starbase. Support ship Bob returned to Port Canaveral in the evening after collecting the NG-20 fairing halves from Bob's brother ship, Doug. On Saturday, crews draped heavy anchor chains over the tower segments as they prepared the painted and treated sections for transport through the Gulf of Mexico. On Sunday, support ship Bob headed back out to sea in support of the Plankton Aerosol Cloud Ocean Ecosystem, or PACE mission, ahead of its Thursday launch on Falcon 9. A Marmac 2680 barge headed inland from Port Canaveral on Monday towards the Term Basin at Kennedy Space Center, where it will be loaded with the orbital launch tower sections bound for Starbase. Passing by the launch viewing area, the barge soon arrived at the holding area for the tower segments, pulling up to the pier where it was moored in place for loading. Doug returned to Port Canaveral from Detyan Shipyard in South Carolina with just read the instructions in tow, freshly repaired and ready for another long run of missions. A newly built or refurbished Octagrabber robot used to hold down Falcon 9 boosters after landing was soon loaded on to just read the instructions. By Tuesday morning, three of the four tower segments were loaded and anchored onto the Marmac barge, and the fourth was readied for its journey to Texas. At 1.33 a.m. Thursday, Falcon 9 Booster 1081 lifted off on its fourth flight, launching the PACE mission into a polar orbit from Space Launch Complex 40 in a rare overland flight. Falcon 9 Booster 1081 then made a successful return to landing Zone 1 after lofting PACE and the Falcon 9 second stage into space. After finishing stowage, Falcon 9 Booster 1062 was laid onto the horizontal transporter and sent off to Roberts Road for refurbishment. New propellant tanks were delivered to Port Canaveral to increase the propellant storage capacity at Launch Complex 39A, allowing SpaceX to support more Falcon Heavy launches. The segments for Starbase's second launch tower began their journey to Brownsville in the afternoon, heading out of the Term Basin towards Port Canaveral. The tower segments then reached the port that night, and the second launch tower segments headed out to sea, setting sail for Starbase. And there you have it, another SpaceX and Starbase weekly update, brought to you by Lab Padre. Don't forget to hit the like and subscribe button if you haven't already, and we'll see you next week. Thanks for watching. Lab Padre, out.